that few hours ago, God provided the opportunity for me to meet our former president, Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan. I'm so happy and so glad that I met you not when you are in office, but outside the office. This is true you, a true Nigerian, a true African, and a true leader. Before I go into a very brief remarks, let me sincerely appreciate our keynote speaker, Dr. Abdullahi Bakili, for taking us down the memory lane about Africa and indeed the constitution of all those of us that are contained here in Africa. We are all students, we are smart students. In every little given opportunity we learn smartly. We have learned so much from you today, even though we've read majority of all of the presentations in history. But it is good we're hearing from the horse's mouth. We sincerely appreciate you. Just a while ago, the former, I mean, the deputy governor of Bayelsa State made a very good remark, as he probably has read into my own remarks, prepared remarks. I think what, is, what he falls short of saying is, get the broom and sweep the mess. I think my dear brother, the governor of Bauchi State is hearing loud and clear. I didn't say it. If he didn't day, he didn't day. Like our senior brother used to say. And again, possibly what he falls short to say is that it is high time we tell our founding fathers, so to speak, to allow we the younger one the judge, make our mistakes, and correct it. And what he wants to simply say, if I may paraphrase it, is it is high time we stop being political hallelujah boys to our colonial masters. Let me begin by once again. Felicitating with His Excellency Dr. Goodluck Billy Jonathan GCFR, former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and international statesman extraordinary on his 46th birthday, 64th birthday. You know, those of us at 46, 47. We pray that we grow as old as you are and even beyond. May God continue to bless you for us. His Excellency is a man who has earned the right to celebrate the increase of his years on earth with fulfillment. In 2015, he demonstrated in very historic terms that he is a Democrat indeed and a patriot par excellence. Where lesser men and less honorable men will have tried to subvert the apparent will of the people in that year's general elections, His Excellency, as then the President of Nigeria and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, took the path of personal honor and national interests. 
The Nigeria and indeed the world will always celebrate this wonderful man for that singular feat of selflessness and love for the nation. Democracy and the unity of states. Unity is the primary hypothesis on which democracy stands in any state. We have chosen it as a form of government. This is because in a functional democracy, the people, in spite of their diversity in ideology, faith, tribe and politics have always united in a majority for most things to happen in the society, including leadership. Nigeria's Fourth Republic is now in her 22nd year, but unfortunately, we remain a shaky democracy, tottering along like a toddler still learning to walk. Consequently, we hardly speak with a united voice on anything as a nation. This state of affairs makes me believe that we need more democracy, not less. Of course, by more democracy, I mean the real essence and practice of democracy. The pure marriage of consensus, which enthrones the overall public good rather than any sectional, regional, or parochial interests. With the foregoing in mind, I say that how to make Nigeria democracy work for us as a united factor rather than the divisive measure which have turned, we have turned into is the most pressing need of the season, especially as gladiators begin to take position for 2023. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I declare one Nigeria must quickly come to mean more than it currently does to the average citizen or we we'll risk losing more than we bargained for as leaders and those we've been led. For the records, my concept of a united Nigeria is not one where everyone is held down by force or fear, but a nation which guarantees all citizens security, unity, and peace. It must be equitable and allow everyone to thrive on his own merit. Tribe, religion, and class must not be used to discriminate against or marginalize anyone, and civics must encourage cooperation and integration as a cardinal tenet of citizenship. We have to start substituting place of residence for place of origin and finding ways to immediately and brutally punish corruption in private and public spheres. Our politics and leadership must transform into a service that measures the quality of life is highly despite social status while essential goods and services for affordable. Our local jobs market must deliver jobs to people at the level of learning, skills, and experience. The nation must have economic stability and be a family-friendly place where parents can raise the, generation, the next generation well. We will require income equality, especially across the genders. A united Nigeria will thrive on political stability and social security. It also goes without saying that the quality of the public education system and that of the public health system must be high. Both must deliver free to affordable services. It is only then that people will belong because they want to, not because 
they must. It is to these ideals that I have committed my leadership to achieving in Kogi State. And while we have not yet arrived, we have definitely journeyed a good part of the way. Kogi is the emerging paradigm for the cooperation and integration as a basis for citizens. As a basis for citizens, cooperation, coexistence instead of the previous divide and root tactics with which failed politicians, failed leaders, harmed citizens in our past. It is a paradigm we hope to expand and export to larger Nigeria society, Africa, and the world as we merge into the future while building an increasingly peaceful and prosperous Nigeria society. If I may paraphrase from here, if you look at Africa, Nigeria is the trigger of Africa. It means if Africa must save herself from colonial slavery and neocolonialism, Nigeria must rise up. And as God will have it, we are taking that step right away. Democracy and unity of state is a timely theme at this moment in Nigeria's democratic journey as a nation. The Good Luck Jonathan Foundation and her continuing work in democracy and good governance must be commended for again demonstrating uncanny understanding of not just the state but also the mood of the nation. Thank you and God bless you.